Hello guys, welcome back to the Bin Victors, and this is Cubin K. Today, I will introduce how to deal with hacking. All informations are come from my knowledge, experience, and the information of community. Before start, let's see his mechanism of smashes and dodges. <coughs> if you saw my previous video of hacking, you might know his smash includes 4 level. As many characters did, Hagi's first smash also has Airborne. Second level smash Phantom Shooter is continuously available until your stamina is exhausted and you can choose holding position or moving. Except second level smash, all smashes have additional attacks, but only third or fourth smashes have additional charge attacks. You can keep charging until your stamina is exhausted, but the damage increase is applied to smash only one time. If you don't want to charge, just click R button twice. But if you want to do, hold your second R. And don't forget, all charge attacks need C rank of each smash skills. Next is dodge. Hagi's dodge is really similar with Lan's slip dash and slip through. But different with Lan, he has only one skill for dodge. And if you rank it up to C rank, you can do arcane dash twice. As some characters did, Hagi also have dodge smash. But he can choose moving 4 way or exploding arcane mine. If you click R button with neutral move, you can use arcane mine. What's going to introduce you now is his characteristic move. You already know that Hagi can do additional attack or charge attack after 3rd or 4th smash. Interestingly, Hagi can insert dodge between smash and additional attack if your smash rank is B. Besides, he can even insert dodge between charge and charge attacks. You can see two examples of that. Hagi's this specific concept is quite difficult, so let's see some diagrams to understand easier. Let's remember, there are 4 steps within Hagi's smash. Each one is smash, dodge, charge, and additional attack. The normal smash and additional attack's flow is like this. If you insert dodge between them, the flow will be changed like this. If you don't do additional attack directly, but using charge, the flow will be changed like this. Then we meet forked road. In this situation, you can choose the position of insertion of dodge. If you use dodge before charging, the flow will be changed like this. But if you use charge first, the flow will be changed like this. In conclusion, there are 5 ways to do Haggis 3rd and 4th smash. Let's see the forked road again. Next is utilization of Hagi's buffs. Hagi has 3 buffs and each has its own ability. First is Illusion Shield. It gives fast HP restoration like Ibis restoration. The maximum number of party player who is influenced by buff is 4 and this maximum is same to other 2 buffs. The Sword Rain has same effect with Succubus Fang. The last buff is Impulse Reason. In test server, Impulse Reason makes party member stamina infinity. But in official version, the infinite stamina is deleted and altered with stamina restoration. Despite of characteristic ability of 3 buffs, the SP skill which consume SP at the most isn't buff. The skill which is high ranked in the usage of high frequency is Spectral Sting. It costs 250 SP and its damage is cost effectiveness. So frequency of using Spectral Sting influences the total damage. Keep in mind, you should use it frequently. Phantasma Slash is AoE and slows down small mobs, 
but it isn't commonly used. Because it isn't cost effectiveness and its preparation action is too long. You might sell some glows which Hagi created around him and they go off when Hagi do smash or dot smash. Its name is Pieces of Phantom and it is the most important among the skill which Hagi has. Normally it is created one piece per one normal attack. But if you learn Spirit Cutter, you can make 3 pieces per 1 normal attack. But it only applies on accurate 4th normal attack. Then let's see the creation of the pieces of Phantom again in slow motion. Because pieces are created per 1 normal attack, you can see the 3 pieces of Phantom. Normally, then next hit should be 4, but if you did Spirit Cutter, the number of pieces will become 6, the max. Did you see the 6 pieces of Phantom? Because of these reasons, Hagi players should master Spirit Cutter very well. Moreover, the portion of pieces of Phantom's damage in total damage is almost 40%, and the number of pieces of Phantom also influences Hagi's super important passive buffs. Finally, Pieces of Phantom even defend some damages from mobs. These are reasons why Pieces of Phantom and Spirit Cutter is important to Hagi. The energy of Phantom is the passive buff of Hagi. It is stacked by 1 stack per 6 Pieces of Phantom, and you must keep this buff long as you can. This buff has 3 states, and its buff's name is Dagger, Short Sword, and Shield. The first made buff is the Short Sword, the orange color buff. And it will be activated in any time if you make 6 hit of Pieces of Phantom. In other words, if you did Spirit Cutter well, you can make 6 Pieces of Phantom easily and get 1 stack of Energy of Phantom. The orange Short Sword buff raises your damage, so it is necessary that you keep your stack of energy of phantom to 6. But different with short sword, the orange buff, dagger, the red buff, and shield, the green, is only activated in conditional. Dagger, the red buff, is activated only when you aren't hit by mob during 22 seconds, while you have at least one stack of energy of phantom. It is quite hard to activate and keep because you have not to be hit by mobs. But the keeping of this buff is really important for Hagi because it increases the restoration of stamina of Hagi. Therefore, if you want to play your Hagi with sufficient stamina, you should keep this dagger buff and do spirit cuddle well to create enough pieces of phantoms. And the left one, the shield, the green buff, is only activated when your HP is under 30%. When your HP is decreased under 30%, while you have at least one stack of energy of phantom, shield, the green buff is activated, and it increases your defense and restoration of HP. In conclusion, when you are playing Hagi, you should keep your dagger buff, the red buff, as long as you can to manage your Hagi's stamina. The last topic is the utilization of Extinction Lore and Infinite Requiem. Whether you are fighting in boss raids or fields, I recommend using Infinite Requiem first as you can. It is because of its great damage. But in case of Extinction Lore, I don't recommend using it freely. Although it has invincible time at final firing, it is quite hard to make 20 hits of pieces of phantom during 20 seconds limit to increase extinction roars damage when you are soloing. Its difficulty is a little easier than resonance. My prepared tips are over, but now you know the essence of Hagi plays. Just keep in mind again these three important points. First, be good at spirit cutter 
and keep your energy of phantom as high and as long as you can. Second, using your spectral sting frequently. And third, use infinity requiem first as you can. I think Hagi is sometimes boring because of spirit cutter, and that boring is similar with Lin's. However, as I mentioned in front of this video, Hagi has many choices when he attacks. Therefore, make efforts to be good at Spirit Cutter, but don't be tied up by it too much. It will make your playing boring. Always thank you for watching my video, and see you next time in my next video. Bye bye! See you later!